Hello friends, in this video we will study about left ventricular hypertrophy and right ventricular hypertrophy criteria in ECG. First of all, left ventricular hypertrophy. In that, first is Sokolov criteria. In Sokolov criteria, we will see S wave in V1 and add with R wave in V5. If it is more than 3.5 millivolts or more than 35 small boxes, it is said to be left ventricular hypertrophy. I will first tell the criteria and then show how to do it practically. Second is Cornell voltage criteria. In this we will see R wave in AVL and adding it to S wave in V3. In women, if it is more than 2 millivolts or more than 20 small boxes, it is suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy. And in men, if it is more than 2.8 millivolts or we can say more than 28 small boxes, suggest left ventricular hypertrophy. Then the third criteria is we will see R wave in AVL. If it is more than 1.2 millivolts or more than 12 small boxes, it suggests left ventricular hypertrophy. The most commonly used criteria is Sokolov criteria. Let's study it with the help of example. In this ECG, if we will use Sokolov's criteria, we have to consider S wave in V1 and R wave in V5 or V6. S wave in V1 is around 20 small boxes and R wave in V6 is around 25 small boxes. The total comes to 45, which is more than 35. So, if it is more than 35, it is diagnostic of LVH. Let's see one more example. We will apply Cornell voltage criteria. In this we have to consider in this we have to consider R wave in AVL and S wave in V3. The R wave in AVL has around 12 small boxes and S wave in V3 have around 40 small boxes. It comes around 52. According to our criteria, it should be more than 28 small boxes. So, it suggests LVH. Now let's come to diagnostic criteria for right ventricular hypertrophy. The changes which suggest right ventricular hypertrophy are, first of all, there should be right axis deviation. Then, consider R wave in V1. It should be more than 0.7 millivolts or more than 7 small box and third criteria is there should be strain pattern in V1 and V2 strain pattern means T wave inversion or ST depression now let's learn in the ECG strip first of all there is right axis deviation. Because there is predominantly negative wave in lead V1 and positive in lead V3. It suggests right axis deviation. We have already discussed axis deviation in our previous videos. Link will be there in the description as well as in the i button. Second criteria is R wave in V1 should be more than 7 mm. Here it is around 12 millimeter or 12 small box and the third criteria is strain pattern in V1 in V2 as you can clearly see T wave inversion with ST depression which suggests a strain pattern and these changes suggest right ventricular hypertrophy so in nutshell if I want to tell 
chamber hypertrophy depends upon the voltage of QRS complex and voltage of QRS complex depends on many factors like age, gender, build. For example, if obese patient, there will be low voltage complexes compared to the normal individual. So it underestimates the voltage. So the best method for knowing chamber hypertrophy is echocardiography. So friends, I hope you like the video. Do like, share and subscribe our channel and share the video among your friends. Thank you.